in my house, my wife does all the cooking. And not because I think, you know, women's places in the kitchen. Uh, more because I'm inept. And when she is on a trip for business or something, she wants to make sure that the kids are well nourished. So she might say something like, Chico, please make sure that the kids have their veggies. Now they can have them for lunch or dinner, but they have to have their veggies. Now when she says that, think about that, that statement that she made. The kids have vegetables for lunch or the kids have vegetables for dinner. Let's say she goes on this trip and for some bizarre reason, I happen to be so far ahead of the game that I do get them vegetables for lunch. And then when dinner time rolls around, I've got vegetables ready for dinner too. I know my 11 year old, who's kind of like the legal theorist of the family, is going to argue with me. Dad, she said vegetables for lunch or for dinner. She didn't say both. Is he right? Is it the case that my wife's statement, the kids have vegetables for lunch or the kids have vegetables for dinner, precludes the possibility of both? Well, first let's notice something about this proposition, about this claim about reality. Really, it's made up of two different propositions. The kids have vegetables for lunch and the kids have vegetables for dinner. And then those two propositions are put together by a word that isn't a proposition, in other words, a connective. So we have a compound proposition here. We have a proposition that's made up of additional propositions plus a connective. Now this one is a two-place connective because it connects two different propositions. We've also learned about a different two-place connective called a conjunction. And the thing about a conjunction, we said that it was a truth functional connective. Not only did it connect two different propositions, but the new compound proposition that was made up of those two component propositions the truth value of that compound proposition was a function of, or was totally dependent upon, the truth values of the individual component propositions themselves. So we said, if both component propositions are true, then the whole compound proposition, the conjunction itself, is true. But if either one or possibly both of those conjuncts were false, then the whole conjunction would be false. What about our new proposition here? What makes this thing true or false? Would it be true if the kids had vegetables neither for lunch nor for dinner? Well, no, that would make it false, right? What about if they had vegetables just for lunch but not for dinner? Would it be true then? Yeah, that seems like just having it for vegetables for lunch would make that proposition true. What about if you just had it for dinner? Again, it seems like just having it for lunch or just having it for dinner, either one of those is gonna make that whole proposition true. The kids had vegetables for lunch or the kids had vegetables for dinner. What about if they have it for both? Well, think about it. Would your wife be upset with you if, if she found out, did they have vegetables for lunch and dinner? Oh my goodness. No, I, she'd probably be stoked about it, right? That would not make that claim false. In other words, our new compound proposition is true if and only if at least one, possibly both of the two component propositions are also true. If both of the component propositions are false, then the whole uh, compound proposition is gonna be false. So the truth value of the compound proposition is a function of, or is totally dependent upon, the truth values of the component propositions. This is a truth functional connective. Now notice this is different from our conjunction. We're gonna call this one a disjunction. Again, confusingly, we're gonna use the word disjunction to refer not only to the connective, but to the ultimate result, the compound proposition that we make using that disjunction connective and the two component propositions. We'll call that whole thing a disjunction. So a disjunction, again, two place connective, or we can also call that a binary or a dyadic connective. And all that means is it puts two different propositions together into a new proposition. And this disjunction is going to be true if and only if at least one, possibly both of the disjuncts of the component propositions are true. And it's false if both of the component propositions are also false, if both of the disjuncts are false. Also notice, and I'm not, I'm not sure if I've actually uh, stressed this enough, that things go the other way around as well. If the disjunction is true, then I'll know that at least one, possibly both of the disjuncts are true. If the disjunction is false, I'll know that both of the disjuncts are false. In our textbook, Smith gives the following examples. Either Frances had eggs for breakfast or she had eggs for lunch. Frances had eggs for breakfast and or lunch. Frances had eggs for breakfast or lunch or both. Now at this point, 
you might be a little bit confused. In fact, oftentimes when I teach this in a classroom setting, my students will ask me about this because they can think of uses of the word or that aren't the same as what I just said just now. And here's an example. Let's say that you go to the mall and uh, you are shopping with moms and you see like, oh, there's these two super cute tops. Oh, look at mom, the red one and the blue one. I got to have them both. Eek. And mom looks at you and says, ah, oh, exasperation. You can have the red top or the blue top. Now notice when she says, buy the red top or buy the blue top, does she mean at least one of those two things, possibly both of them would be true, that possibly you can get the red and the blue top? No. In fact, what she means is almost the opposite. She means that you can have at most one of them, the red top or the blue top, but possibly neither one. She wouldn't be mad if you were just like, oh, just, okay, mom, I'm just not gonna get anything, right? So that statement really is, is claiming almost the opposite, at most one, possibly neither. So what's going on here? Well, remember that a sentence isn't identical to the proposition that it expresses. The proposition that a sentence expresses is that claim about reality, the thing that it's saying is true or false. And you can use different sentences to make the same proposition or the same sentence to claim different propositions. In the same way, you can use this word or to express different connectives. It could mean at least one of these options, possibly both. It could mean at most one of these options, possibly neither. Now this may concern you because of course, the whole reason to do logic is because it's useful, right? We want logic in order to be able to use it to reason things out. And you may think, but I don't have this very important use of the word or, right? I need to be able to use that word and, and make sense of it. Well, don't worry. With the tools that we already have, we can actually compensate for the lack of that kind of a connective. So no big deal. We're going to use the word disjunction to talk about the connective, meaning at least one, possibly both. And if we have need to account for that other use of the word or to mean at most possibly neither, we can do that too. Exactly how we're gonna do that will come about as we go further in the class. But here's another way you can use the word or. You can actually use it more as an if then kind of a statement, especially when it's used as sort of like an ultimatum. Like imagine your dad knocks in the door and says, hey boy, either clean this room or you're not going to the concert. Well, he's not saying one of those two things are true, possibly both of them are true. What he's saying is, if you don't clean your room, then you won't go to the concert. So really he's making more of an if then claim with that word or. So again, don't fret, right? We're gonna have tools to deal with that exact scenario, but not quite yet in the next video. What's important for us to remember is that the word or is not the disjunction. The disjunction has to do with the new compound proposition. And that's not identical to the sentence. That's identical to the claim that's being made by the sentence. And in fact, you can actually express a disjunction without using the word or. You could use a word like alternatively. The kids can have uh, vegetables for lunch. Alternatively, they could have vegetables for dinner. You could even use no word at all. You could say, the kids have vegetables for lunch, the kids have vegetables for dinner. And you kind of imply the word or in there. So there you go. There's our next connective, the disjunction. And just one more time, let me reiterate what we're talking about. This is a two-place connective. The resulting compound proposition is true if and only if at least one, possibly both of the component propositions are true. And it's false if both of them are false. And remember, it is not identical to the word or. It is a connective. So it's part of a proposition and propositions are not identical to sentences. Propositions are the claims made by sentences. Exactly what is a proposition? Remember, we're not taking any specific kind of stand on that just yet. Uh, possibly later in the course, possibly in philosophy of language, I don't know. But whatever a proposition is, a disjunction is something that is going to go in between two different propositions to make a new compound proposition that is truth functional in the way that we talked about. True if at least one, possibly both are true. False if they're both false. Now there's no exercises for this one uh, and that's probably because it's pretty easy to figure out which ones are the disjuncts. Pretty similar to which ones are the conjuncts from the last episode. Just, you know, now we're talking about a different connective. Uh, what really gets confusing is when we have to figure out the difference between two component propositions when the order matters. When it matters which one is in which position 
And that is something that we're gonna do in the next video on conditionals. So for next time, please read section 1.6.4, conditionals.